Hey, uh, welcome to Melbourne Calling, Sean yeah. Song, no Doris Chancy. Um, thanks for coming along. Thank you. I think um, the point of this show is to get the perspective of Chinese Australians about this the situation that's developing in East Asia. This um, arms build up, this trade war, this growing tensions between Australia and China. Um, I think the vast majority of Chinese people that live in Australia that I've met are a little bit torn. They love living here, but they're also loyal and um, proud of developments in China in terms of, you know, hundreds of millions of people have been dragged out of poverty since 1980 and all the rest of it. Um, and I was just uh, hoping today just to flesh out some of the, um, the discussion points that have been taking place in the mass media on the situation facing Chinese Australians. But before we go any further, Sean, explain to us, when did you first come to Australia? What's your life been like since you've been here? What, 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 what jobs have you had? I mean, I know you've had a pretty interesting time. Yeah, uh, I came here, here when yeah, I came here when I was uh, 18. Actually, uh, um, I joined, I signed up as a um, um, what we called thief. Yeah, the the sorry, the thief, the thief. A thief, a thief. <laughs> <laughs> and they let you in. <laughs> Very generous border security. <laughs> All right, I'm just honest. Uh, yes, the TAF, and um, I was um, enrolled as a ho uh, hospitality hotel management and, and the major. And after a few years, I find out that wasn't, a, wasn't really the something that I liked. And then I start my own business and start open a nightclub with my, my friends. And, um, and, and, um, and then ultimately, I figured out myself um, to be in a commercial pilot as a, also a flight instructor here. So. And that's what you do now? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing now. I'm working as a charter pilot and I've been um, ferry aircraft from uh, Darwin back to Melbourne and also I ferry another aircraft um, from Perth back to Melbourne. So basically I'm, I'm joining a big cross on the... On the on this the, is an airport you operate out of, yeah? Yeah, yes. yeah, I'm flying as a big cross uh, 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 around Australia yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. continent, yep. uh, even I'm not Christian, so yeah, so that's uh, good. Yeah. No. <laughs> and Doris, what's your story? You came here um, when you were 18 as well? I came here when 17. 17. So I, I came here for, for school, for high school. So my parents just wanted me to come here to study English, so to, to speak pro proper English. And um, after a few years being here, I'd sort of fall in love and didn't want to go. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I stayed and I've worked for Telstra before and, um, and now I've started my own business. I've got a few projects going on. So now the wine is, is one of them. That's what we're having right now. So it's, um, so it's too you know, it's witty. It yeah, it's just yeah. Um, interesting labels with, um, you know, um, witty sayings on it to light up this, the tension, ease the tension a little bit if, if you know, two parties are not on good terms. So. Yeah, it would be a bad date if you had to like rely on the... Uh, the yeah. The, the one, the one I mean, like, to, to me, it's like for, for most life's problems, my, my solution is wine, I yeah. think. And okay. it's not because like, you know, wine makes us forget things, but it's more of, it opens up conversations and it's yeah. like, it's like That's a true. catalyst. Yeah. For and how has it been for you with COVID, being isolated from home and not being able to go back um, to your family? Has it been tough? Yeah, difficult. I mean, I haven't seen my dad for a year. Yeah. So it's 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 been difficult, and I've like pretty much all of us have businesses here and there as well. And you know, being here trying to navigate business over there, it's it's just impossible. Mm. What about you, Sean? Has COVID impacted you? Uh, yeah, as, as uh, talking about as a pilot, actually, the COVID uh, is doing, still are doing, I would say, a, a really huge impact on the aviation industry. Uh, luckily that I've been a good citizen and paying tax that I'm, I'm eligible for the job uh, keeper. Mm. So I, I was all right. It's company, uh, look after my company. And I have to say that the system that we're trying to comply in that look after me pretty well. And I was obviously that um, it's in a, in a, in a marginal, but but I was I pretty much the um, this COVID time is a challenging for the whole human race and even for myself. I never thought I was really a um, like calm and peaceful person that I can stay in my home that more than two weeks without going out. Actually, I 
I really like that myself. So I think it really depending on what angle you're approaching this uh, uh, hard time. I, I, I wouldn't say I enjoyed it, but I, I was doing all right with my family. So. Mm. I mean, there's been a lot of conspiracy theories, and unfortunately, some politicians who have sort of tried to argue here in Australia and overseas that COVID, some type of Chinese conspiracy to destroy the West, um, the Wuhan flu, rather than it just being sort of some type of pandemic like the Spanish flu in the beginning of the 20th century. I mean, how does that make you feel? What do you think about that, Doris? Like when you hear those type of, um, I mean, you have to say it's out and out racist arguments, really. That's trying to pin this pandemic on on one country. Well, I think it is a virus. A virus is a virus, and it's it's, it, it's a quite um, devastating, you know, thing that's happened in this earlier this century. And to be honest, I think we probably have to, you know, learn to live with one virus or another in this coming century or even longer, because. Globalization is inevitable. It's like you know, people are traveling and everything, and they, you know, as people travel, that some sort of disease is going to be carried around the world. That's why Bill Gates started a foundation to research on virus and and vaccines and stuff because he sees it. It's, it's coming and it's going to happen, and hopefully this, you know, this is the last time. But you know, most likely it's not going to be. So I think it is a virus, and I. My, me personally, I don't believe it's a conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and no, I, that's, I just, I just, we just needed to get out there for the record. So, how do you think um, China's dealt with it compared to, say, America? We've had up to half a million people dead in America from COVID. Um, China seems to, from as an outsider looking in, it seems to have clamped down and dealt with it quite well, and life seems to be pretty much back to normal in most of China. Um, how do you how do you feel about that? Is that correct? Is that a correct analysis? Or? Given the population density, I think they've done a good job. It's it's a pretty good job. Um, I really, I mean, it it just it makes me really sad to to think about what happened in America. And half a million people dead is it's not it's not a light matter to talk about. And it's, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to actually talk about that many. People actually, when you put like when I put my mind to it, it's it's kind of just it, it brings out really bad feeling. So mm. it's hard to talk about it. But I suppose China like did a good job. And how do you feel about? I mean, does it show the importance of a strong state um, in China, and even to a in a different level in here in Victoria, where the government has stepped in? Yeah. with quite strict laws for lockdown and so on, uh, compared to, say, in other parts of the world where it's pretty, pretty much more relaxed and left up to the individual, especially in some American states? I mean, what, what, what's your analysis of that, Sean? I, I think, um, especially in the emergency status, yeah, like I, um, I, I think I can, I can give you a really good example. If I'm a captain of flying aircraft, now we have an engine failure, yes? And as a captain, as the, the, the as governor, I need everyone to be seated and with the fasten the seatbelt. I don't want a different opinions. I don't want a different voices. I want to just sit down and I deal with it. And that is what the captain thought. That's also that was the I'm um, um, what we call we use the terminology what we say pilot in command. I'm in command, at this, especially in this emergency uh, situation. So basic, basically, you know, like lots of matters, we can have a different voices. We can have a, we have a time to even chat about it. We can even arrange a meeting. But with the the COVID, this is situation, basically, is having an engine failure. I'm the captain. The government, the government, the Victoria, obviously, the the government. I think that somehow they they did a pretty well job. And I, this is the this is the time and this is the point. And should the government really? come in you know if they're really cruising everything fine all good we can talk about it with the customer what you want to eat what you want to drink as a first class services there's no problem but when there's the, the emergency status as the governor as a government you should that you have a your command your command you are you're having a responsibility to look after your people so you step in you have to come in with a policy or um i would say solution to make the situation under the control so basically, that's what the um, 
what the Chinese government did or been doing so far. And I can see the Victorian government, they pretty much, the, the rules that we were sort of at a certain time we didn't understand, but when we see the outcome, you know, and, and I, I think the people would, would understand more. I mean, the, when this emergency, government is partly in command, it, they're, they, are the, they are the captains, they need to jump in and make the situation under the control. And at, the, at this point, I have to say, as a, as a passenger, as a taxpayer or whatever you want to call yourself, you have to be seated and obey, I would say, you know, and mm. just, just follow the regulation. Everyone has to work on the same picture. And otherwise, if, if you've got something going on, oh, you want to go and use the toilet, I want to I get, a, get a bottle of wine, I want to I get some nuts. And where's authority about? What, I'm, a, I'm a captain. I'm in command. You know, where's commanding? You know, is no one listening to me? Mm. So basically, I think the as, as the Chinese side, even you know, as uh, as a Victorian, I, I would say, yeah, um, we, we we we've been through a hard time, but we we um, we've been dealing the situation reasonably well. I think mm. I'm I'm happy with the outcome. Mm. I guess I think Victorian did a good job too. Like it's. It's amazing how it's, it, it would be a very hard decision to make, obviously, and then they put people first before anything else. I think it's important. Mm. Did the Chinese uh, in Australia, it's been a long history, you know, going right back to the 1850s here in Melbourne with the, uh, or here in Victoria, I should say, with the gold rush, but also racism against Chinese Australians has had a long history. Um, we had the um, Buckland riot, the Lumping Flats riots, the White Australia policy, and for a long period of time there was pretty much no Chinese in Australia. Now, since the 70s and 80s, that's changed. Down the road here at the Fitzroy Public Housing Estates, there's a massive Chinese community. Chinese who are used to live in Vietnam were kicked out of Vietnam when the 79 war took place. Some that came over after Tiananmen Square, and some more recent. Um, and, I just, and there's been a lot of stuff in the media how Chinese Australians have suffered racism. There's been racist incidents where people have blamed them for COVID. Um, so my question to you is two pronged, Doris. Have you yourself ever suffered racism, racist um, incidents or um, here in Australia? And what, how does it make you feel when you read in the paper that other Chinese Australians have, even if you haven't? I personally haven't experienced racism at all. Like uh, for the 18 years I've been here, I've, um, there's been zero racism. And um, up until last year, I started receiving messages from my friends and they were like, oh, you know, are you okay? Are you safe? And um, it, like, the messages make me feel, obviously, I'm quite, you know, moved and I feel warm at heart, but it actually made me realize it's becoming an issue. So it's, it's becoming an alarming issue where my friends actually worry about my safety when I'm here. So. Um, Your friends back home? Yeah, no, yeah. my friends here, oh, yeah. like Excuse Aussie, me. like Australian yeah, yeah, yeah. local okay, friends. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, so I've got, like, you know, a, a few friends actually called me. They're like, oh, we saw this on the news. And are you okay? Do you feel, you know, are you, you know, obviously? That's nice, but sad. Yeah, yeah. it's very yeah. nice to yeah. receive messages like that. But it's sad in a way where, you know, this has becoming. But they've even noticed the issue. Mm. Like, you know, yeah. it's, it's the. You know, it's been well reported in the yeah. media, yeah. Yeah, it is. It has right. been, and um, and it is an issue. I think we need to work out. I mean, we're a multicultural society, and we're proud of being a multicultural society. And it's you know, people from all around the world bringing their best to you know build the city to how it is now, and we should be proud of it. I think, and we should work together to overcome this. And it's not it's not only like Chinese; it's like you know all other races as well. Yeah. Have you, have you, Sean, ever copped any racism or, and, and even if you haven't, I mean, how have you, how does it make you feel when there's been a, you know, proven increase in racist incidents against Chinese Australians over the last year or so? Unfortunately, and also unfortunately, I haven't, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit similar with, with Doris and I haven't, I haven't, I haven't encountered any racism from about 15 years I live in Melbourne. And maybe I was too open-minded, the people sound give me shit, I, I didn't really understand it. But somehow that's why I think the human, I think the, the even even in China, the, the, we, the people come from a different city, we have a problem too. So what would you call that, the resistance as well, you know, as well? 
So basically, the, this discrimination is, is, happen, is, is happening everywhere. It's, it's not only about your race, with, with a different job, different, different career, and different, different, uh, different even the income, uh, you know, salaries and the, the level. They all have a kind of you know, in a discrimina discrimination. So I would say the human, we really have to realize that we, we are no longer separated nations. We are human, human, human beings and we are uh, a global, globally race, you know, like we, we, we're no longer uh, separate nations, you know, like you're Chinese, you're Korean, you're Japanese, you're, you're Australians, you're Americans. We're all um, humans. Yes, pretty much we, we all, the, uh, economically, in many ways, we, we uh, rely on each other. So we can't do that anymore. So pretty, pretty much all this racism, this is a problem. I understand it. I understand. I do understand why there is a, you know, re, uh, the racist is a problem. I do understand. But I would say that's the only the, the thing that as a human, we need to really uh, put that into consideration. We need to, uh, in, in, yeah, I would say, improve it. We, we can't have this this really a low frequency stuff. Is is, I think this racism should be, um, you know, it should be terminated. Is 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 not really a wise thing to talk about anymore. You know, like the uh, every race it can have a have a the people that we don't like. We think is you know, and every race is, and all the races can have some people that we are the man. So, and I think also it's understanding of different race. For I'll use an example when I was um, so there are obviously fifty six or ethnic groups in in China. So I went travel one year, went to like a small group, and it's their festival. Um, and in they, China. Yeah, in China. Yeah. And then they made me dress up in their costumes and I was having a fist and everything. It was such a fascinating experience for me. So later on, whatever happens to that race and to that ethnic group, I actually pay attention. Mm -hmm. And I follow and I was like, oh, you know, is there something I know? Is there something I don't know? And I, I actually opened my heart, wanting to understand the, that group of people. So I think it's also like, you know, trying to open up a little bit and understand each other and then it'll, it'll probably fix the issue. So, like, I mean, neither of you are political refugees from China. I mean, you could go back to China tomorrow morning, COVID permitting, on a plane and uh, you love China, your families, both of your families are in China, um, but you've both chosen to live in Australia, at least at this, for this part of your life. So, so what's the attraction of living in Australia to you? What, what, why have you chosen to live in Melbourne rather than in your hometown? Um, well, Maybe for me, I, first off. I've, um, I've actually stayed in a few other countries and um, nowhere else actually made me feel the way Melbourne did. So I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. When I first landed in, because back then there's no direct flight to Melbourne. So when I first landed in, in Sydney, I had to take a domestic flight to Melbourne. And, um, and I, I was at the airport, I didn't know where I was going. So I asked someone, I said, oh, where's the domestic, where should I go? And she pointed me a direction. So I was like, you know, walking in towards that direction. And then, like, I couldn't find my way. I was trying to find my way. And then all of a sudden, this airport buggy stopped in front of me. It was the lady, the same lady. She said, oh, sorry, I've directed you the wrong way. I've been searching for you for a while because, you know, you look the same as every other Asian to me. <laughs> and I, re I realized, look, it, you know, you've got a jacket on, but by the time I've, I had taken it off, like I, I've taken yeah, yeah. my jacket off, it's a denim jacket. So I've been, like she said, I've been searching for that denim, denim that's jacket. That's story. <laughs> I'm kidding. And I was like, no, I'm that's, kidding, I'm I mean, kidding. so. That's what, a cute story, even though I it's know, like yeah. semi-racist, <laughs> but it's like it's also. But to be honest, you know? to yeah. be honest, if yeah. someone has, like when I first, arrived in Australia, for me, who haven't really experienced we that all, many the, all the Aussies look the same. Exactly. Yeah. To me, it's like there's only a little bit of differences between each face, and then yeah. I have to pay extra attention to it to yeah. actually figure out who is who. But then to her, it would be the same. And then when, when she said, oh, I've been searching for a jacket, I, I was like, I felt so warm, and I was like, oh my God, she's so nice. Yeah. And, um, and the, for, for the first few years I've been here, and I've I've, like I've received lots of help and you know like you know people were you know, trying to reach out to me and, and make sure that I wasn't left alone and you know all sorts of you know, help and you know acceptance and I, 
I just felt that I wasn't left out and I really belong here and mm. I was welcomed here and nowhere else actually made me feel the same way. So um, that's why after traveling to a few other countries and came back and I decided to stay here. And what about you? Um, I think um, I, I think is is attributed as as a fate. I would say, you know, I I, I came here, and I I have to say I have to, I had a similar experience with the Dor Doris is having. She, um, I just felt like welcome. Really, I have to say that um, even I nowadays I even recommend that my friends in China who wants to travel. I talk to them, come to Australia, come to Melbourne. It's a really nice. I wouldn't. Even, I wouldn't even want to say it's a country. Yeah, I think that's a too small scale. I would say it's a piece of land, big, big a continent. It's really nice city, and, and Melbourne, even the Sydney. I've been to Sydney a few times. I think it's a really uh, friendly and welcome a continent. I would say, and and I, I I have to say I do enjoy my time, my life here about 15 years even. Um, I would say probably that's fate, and, and obviously I, I, I met my love, uh, my wife here, and my career. Just point at me. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, settle down here, you know, and I'm really um, enjoy the the time here, and I think I think it's um, pretty much. Just for the record, you two aren't married. No, 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 no not really. No. No. Yeah, Just yeah, to make that fair. clear. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so pretty much, I would say, it's, I would say, probably fate. But I, I, I do, I do feel sometimes we, it, it, when you see someone, we uh, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure everyone have that same experience. When you see someone, you know he's the one. When you come someplace, you know that, that you know here, this is the place. And, and yes, I have to say, I do enjoy the time with, the, uh, in 15 years so far in, in Melbourne. Yeah. And I've been to a different city in, in, in Australia, but in the aircraft though, but I was flying. But I, I do have to. I have to say I, I do love this. Uh, the people here. And I do love this continent as a country. Yes, as a pretty. It's also like it's quite open for like all sorts of investment. It's quite open for like people like me to, you know, start a business here, to work here. To, it's 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 like such a good environment as well mm. for for investors to come actually in. Um, Australia and invest and work and build life it's easy to do that here too so I mean I'm very conscious of not getting too much into political issues um, explicitly because of the um, yeah I just don't want to get you guys into trouble if you, if you ever were to go back home and say something that um, might piss off the Chinese government but the, the we probably would <laughs> but I'm, I'm, you know um, <laughs> but ob obviously we've got a different political system in Australia than we have in China. I mean, we call it democracy here in Australia. I think that that's an exaggeration. I think that the power of money corrodes democracy in Australia. And um, if you're rich, you have more power, even in the political arena. Um, but nevertheless, there is some democratic rights that we've won and fought for over the over the 100 and 150 years that we've had them here. In, in, in China, the, the government describes the political system as socialism with Chinese characteristics. Do you think, Sean, that it's possible to replicate the Australian, the current Australian political system into a country like China or not? Uh, I think we have already done it during the COVID situation. Basically, the, the government stepped in about this, the, the, these regulations and the policies, the mandatory. It's already a part of, I would say, what, the Victorian government? Yes. So yes. you say the Victorian government is copying Chinese? I, I wouldn't say, say it's similar. I would say the, uh, you know, That's especially an take. In, in, yeah. in, in the emergency status, we have already done it. to ask Dan Andrews that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we have already done it, I would say, in some ways. And, and obviously the result turned out pretty well. And we 100% managed the, uh, this virus. And obviously there will be, a, and there will always be a, a damage for the economic or, or in, in, in many ways. But actually, I would say compare with I wouldn't even want to mention the name of the country. We we, we manage pretty all right. So if you really say I wouldn't say um, really a replica, but that's the first step to try. You know, like when this, really the government step in and we have already done it. I would say you know, the, the we don't care about title too much, but we cared about the result. We've been doing pretty all right under the COVID. 
that's the that's the what we what we say copy the homework with with the, with the Chinese government been doing. And without, a, I'm not talking about the, the, the title or whatever you want to call the government, uh, communist or democracy, but the, the people in general, for me especially, I want to see the result. I don't care about a democracy or communist. I want to see the result. It's good for people. Let's do it. I think that's, that's my opinion about it. Yeah. What I find talking to Chinese people um, in Australia, whether they're plasterers on building sites, whether they're successful business people, whether they're um, or somewhere in between, there seems to be a very strong sense of pride and nationalism um, insofar as, for example, as I said before, since 1980, you know, almost a billion Chinese people have been taken out of poverty, moved from the farm to the factory. Um, China's now the biggest economy in the world, per capita it's number two uh, to the states. Um, and it's, you know, close to becoming the military sort of powerhouse of East Asia, at least. Um, do, do, you, do you think that amongst Chinese people living here, and obviously Chinese people at home in, in China itself, that there's, that there's a strong sense of nationalism, of um, national pride um, at, the, at the present moment in time? Um, well, that's, that's actually a, a hard question because nationalism has its own definition of it. And if you put that term into like um, China, it's Probably not exact. Um, I think China is is a civilization pretending to be a state. It's more of like, you know, we have, as I said before, we have fifty six ethnic groups, but you know, all living in harmony and together and everything. So they like. I think the bond would be from the civilization identity that we have. Um, in regards to whether, like, you know, obviously I'm quite proud that, you know, all of China is out of poverty now. And um, I'm more actually excited about it because when you think about it, that's 1.4 billion buying power ready to consume things. Like, we're ready to buy, ready to travel, ready to study, whatever. And it's, it's, that's, that's, a, that's a quite exciting thing for a business person. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean... Nationalism, I, I actually, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's like, you know, I do have, obviously China is, 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 is big and it's got like, you know, the capacity and, and the buying power and everything. So if I, let's say, for example, if I weigh 300 pounds sitting here, regardless whether I'm making any noise, you will notice me, like everyone will notice me. And whether that can be seen as a, like, you know, power influence or anything, I think it's an in Video taking. It's a. It's a. It's. It. I suppose it's. It's. You know, individuals' opinion on it. Um, yeah. Sean, the biggest issue, I guess, in East Asia at the moment is the growing tensions between America and China, and and Australia has been caught up in that. We've got obviously the historic political ties Australia's had with Amer with America, um, but the growing economic ties. Um, number one trade partner. You know. China is Australia's number one trade partner, free trade agreement since 2015. Um, it's only about 2% of all investment in, into um, Australia is Chinese, but in terms of trade, China's number one. And recently, um, that's begun to change. You know, we've seen the, um, the beef import bans, the tariffs being introduced on barley, um, the partial bans on grain, discouragement of tourism, the travel warnings, but I guess most importantly, the ban on coal exports from Australia to China. Um, do, does, do, you, do you worry about that? Because I mean, I think one of the reasons that we haven't had a recession in Australia since 1990, notwithstanding COVID, has been this relationship that we've had with this expanding Chinese economy. Um, what, what, do, do you think that this is, uh, this is inevitably going to get worse um, in terms of a trade war? Do you think that tensions will ease? Um, what's your perspective on that? Um, I would say, why would you um, slap someone's face with, with a contract? We're not coming with the guns and with the weapons, especially with the position between Australia and China. We come here with the money, we come here with the opportunities. We come here with the contract with potential opportunity to benefit the both countries' citizens. Why would you say no to that? We're not coming with tank and, and aircraft. And then, like, compared with 100 years ago, mm -hmm. like, we got to colonize 
by the eight different countries, or even more than that. With, with, but, but, but they came in with the guns, with, with, the, with, the, with the tank and aircraft. And, and opium. Yes, exactly, you know. And, 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 but why would you say that? As, as, I would say as um, a, a new generation Chinese Austra uh, Australian, I would say if the government really the thinking of it about the decision, what's, what's the ultimate agenda about the decision you've been, ma you've been making for Australian people? You want to benefit. You want to. You want to. I would say, the benefit of people, and and I, I, I just couldn't see why you want to. You want to. Well, turn, unless turn you down. want to just do everything America tells you to do. So, do you think that Australia should be more independent uh, uh, and develop its own relationship with China and not I, necessarily I, follow everything that America? I would say not even in, in, more independent. Independent, more wise, maybe. What do you want? What do you want f for your people? A political correct or contract that's ben benefit with the, obviously if, if the Chinese, I would say the Chinese government or the people the investor they come with the money how can you slap that how, how can you turn it turn that down you know like I would say I'm not coming with the guns and the violence and stuff you know how could you turn that down and also to the the, the Chinese government that side I would say reconsider you know like like we've been working even during this COVID time, without this COVID time, we wouldn't even realize and how important the role that playing in this global position to each other. We, we probably haven't realized that yet, but with this COVID position, we know. And then we work out the figures now, you know, and we have the time to work out the figures. And I think that that's, that, that's a good time for, for both sides to re reconsider, you know, and, and are you making the right decision for your people? Instead of a political correct, I have to follow someone. You don't have to follow anyone. But what's the agenda of this government? Good for your people or political correct? I have to follow someone. So I think that's, that's my point about it. Even, even to, not to the, uh, to the Australian government, it also uh, to my home country, the Chinese government. You know, like... Doris, did you want to add anything to that? Oh yeah, I, I mean, like definitely, um, I think Australia should find it own sweet spot in the global economy and um, taking up its own role for sure but I do also think there's no winning partners like there's no winning party out of a trade war at all like China closed so many doors to the Australian products with the sacrifice of either quality or price to choose an alternative uh, supply and there's no winner there for them as well. There's, there's no winner for China as well, and there's no winner for Australia, obviously. And it only benefited the other alternative supplies. We've been doing all right, that's the main thing. We've been doing all right. It's not like we, 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 we have been doing a the really bad relationship for 10 years. We've been doing really all right. Yeah, so why, what's the point of turning that, turn that down? I, I can't, We've I can't been out having like really good trade relationships and stuff. We, it's like, for what we want is for everything to go back to normal, to go back to how it used to be, and or even better. And to be honest, China is a big participant in the economy, the global economy. And I mean, it's there's really, I mean, Australia should probably, you know, think of a way to how, whether they or whether they want, like what where they want to be in the global economy to find its own role taken up its own role as well. I mean, America did what they did and picked their role, and that's their choice. We should find our own. Exactly. Well. Yes. We, we, we follow no one. As yeah, even it's so no one. what's the role, if any, for Chinese Australians, for Chinese people who live in Australia, have towards easing tensions to ensure that this trade war doesn't drift further along and even get worse into a military war? I mean, what, what, how, how can you, how do you see your role or your, you know, your employ, you know, the, the work that you do as a way of bringing people together and ensuring that things don't get any worse than what they are at the moment? Well, for me, I think not only during COVID, but even before, like, you know, COVID and for the so many years that I've been here. So I'll, I'll give an example. When COVID first started in China, we didn't know this is going to be a global pandemic. So what we did is we got what we could, the medical supplies and masks and everything, we shipped to China to help with the situation over there. 
And then as soon as we realized this has come to Australia and it broke up, broke out in Australia, what we did is we brought everything back. So we flew everything, like you know, the medical supplies and the masks and the everything back to Australia to try to help. Um, so that's what we've been doing. So both sides, whenever they need, need they, there's a need, there's a need, we try to, you know, work our best to actually help. And that's why I actually appreciate this opportunity to come here to actually talk about, you know, the relationship. I know it's it's a sensitive time, it's a sensitive topic, but. It's good that we could let our voice out to let people know that being a Chinese Australian, um, being Chinese and being Australian, we want it's like mum and dad fighting. <laughs> we want both to, you know, be back together and to actually go back to the way it it, it used to be. Sean, you just made a movie. Oh yes, that's yes. done really well in Sydney, and now it's off to Cannes. So. Yes, I'm, um, I was playing a, a role in the movie, my producer and... And it's all Chinese um, actors and director? And yeah, I would say... Is that right? Yeah, you can say that, yes. My, my, our DP is, is obviously... Uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese living in Australia. Yeah. Yes, and uh, the, my, my, our DP is, is a fully local white Aussie, but I would say that. But it's, it's really an international uh, team. But my movie, I would say, I was playing a role in the movie, my producer and even my director. It was associated with the Hollywood level of, 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 the, of, of the, 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 the quality. And um, yeah, pretty much. So what's the movie about? Uh, the, the movie is, is talking about um, the, the yin yang, the balance, so I would say. The really, uh, that's uh, what we call the Chinese wisdom about yin yang. Everything's of a balance. We can't choose white and really black and white. It's all about balancing. So I would say it's also really similar with the, uh, the, the international relationship between China and Australia. It's not about black and white. It's not about, it's all about the balancing, how you find this balance. It's, especially as the same as playing golf is the sweet point when you hit the ball. It's not like, you know, I'm gonna really, really, really hit it. You're not gonna work. Really the sweet point is perfect timing. Everything is it going to be? When's it going to be released here? Uh, it's already released. Actually, with uh, uh, fortunately, we got the nominated as a um, uh, in the Sydney Flickr Fest yeah. uh, Film Festival. I, I, we, we were there. And the name of the movie is uh, Bush. It's a B U C H E. That's a French word. Yeah, uh, Bush. Yes. Um, and you're off to Cannes if COVID permits. We are waiting for. Yes, we're waiting for because we have already submitted um, all the uh, A grade. Uh, film festival all over the world, but uh, we we are waiting for the result. Obviously, in this year, but unfortunately, if we want anything, we will probably have to maybe the, do the Zoom, <laughs> Zoom meeting. Zoom meeting the, yeah. That's a bit of sad. I'm I'm expecting a red carpet and fancy dress. Thank but you. yeah, but yeah, hopefully. I'm sitting next to a celebrity. Uh, no, it seems so. No, <laughs> I, yeah, thanks. Yeah. You haven't won yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, haven't won. yeah. <laughs> so uh, the Olympics in. Uh, Japan cancelled over COVID, and now China is going to have the Winter Olympics. I mean, do you think that they'll that that will happen? And I'm hoping so. <laughs> well, when is it due to happen? When, 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 when is it this coming winter? Yeah, I think it's 20, 2022. The the Winter Olympics, I think, uh, is the uh, is human race event, global scale, and people that they coming from a different nationalities, they coming gather together and doing this great event sometimes you know we should uh, you know but we have to say we're discriminated by the different nationalities they come from as australian chinese japanese and americans yeah but i think it's uh uh it's a really uh, a good event to uh, gathering the whole human race together reunite everyone yeah really yes so obviously. you're going to cheer for china or australia or both or both, uh, both. you couldn't yeah. care less no both. i cheer for both uh, definitely both uh, the, the the funny part is i uh, like when uh, during a soccer game do you guys follow soccer oh yeah oh well, well during a soccer football. game yeah, football. <laughs> what a... um china is not very good at soccer football so <laughs> the good thing is australia is really good so when like i cheer for china first and then <laughs> when china is out you got oh, hell, plan B. You got an <laughs> alternative. Yeah, uh, got an interesting, I'm lucky. You've yeah. got an interesting theory as to why China isn't so good at soccer. 
Uh, you, you think that the that, that so many people gamble? Yes, that exactly. if they were to gamble on it on China in China, yes, it would destabilize the economy. So the government ensures that the team is quite shit. Exactly. He won't see Tommy destroyed. Oh, really? And uh, <laughs> okay, my son was that. quite a quite a. Think, think about it. I would say it is really uh, uh, it's really uh, uh, if the Chinese national team is going to the World Cup. If you're thinking about all the bosses at the TAB, because the Chinese people have the what we call the nationalism at this point, I don't care anymore about Chinese team gonna win or not. I'm gonna bet on it. Uh, That's okay. somehow it's gonna imbalance the the scale for for the for the for the for the gambling system. That's why and also be part of the China. I, I want to drag American. In as well, and also American, they're not good at it. So that could destroy the Chinese economy if they want to start gambling during the Olympics. <laughs> exactly. The Winter Olympics on some scale. Exactly, because everyone will be losing, you know. <laughs> I just don't see China. We will never win. We will never win. If you're bad against Skinny the opposite. Gold medals. Yeah, exactly. So they're also the American, they're also not good at with, uh, with soccer. Why? You know, there's also another. Why? Why is that? You know? So pretty much, I would say, Olympic, this game, the Olympic game is really a great event for the human gathering together. As me, I would say, um, I don't know because when I actually when I hear anyone talking bad about China, I want to debate about it. But after these fifteen years, when the people are talking shit about Australia, I also want to say something about it. I would say whatever you want to call that. I would say that's maybe a you call it homesick or, or whatever you want to call. It, when when I, was, I, I heard about people they're talking about Australia like oh this is country. And this is uh, really like countryside. We don't. And I. Oh uh, yeah, I, I hear about that. I'm not happy about it. Too. I yeah. hand on. In, no, it's it's just you know. Oh, it's you know it's just a it's all countryside and stuff. I was like, oh, have you seen Melbourne? Exactly. <laughs> I never liked it. I would say that that's the kind of. Uh, I I wouldn't say it's pride is a, a, a protecting system that is coming up. I would say so it is. It's I think it's a, a act of a defense when 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 anyone attacks or say anything that I'm not comfortable about Australia, we start to like you know like the defense system kicks in. It's like have you seen have you seen Australia? Yeah, we're not happy about it. So it's just always a China. So I would say that's the pretty much the best the definition about Chinese Australian because we we pretty much cheer up the boats the old countries. You know? Just to develop that point, Doris, a little bit, um, people talk about Chinese Australians, and I've used that term um, in this chat we're having this afternoon, but um, there's not one Chinese Australia. It's, it's, it's divided, as is every group of people. I mean, for example, I work in the construction industry, and almost all the plasterers are Chinese, um, and they are construction workers, the members of the CFMEU. Sometimes they get paid right, sometimes they don't, but they're 100% working class. Uh, work really, really hard and do a great job on the building sites and proud union members. And then the people that I represent in this area, there's a large Chinese community on the high rise, on the public housing estates. They're mainly elderly Chinese. Um, they're quite poor. They're very well organized in their different um, um, uh, groups in the residents associations, but they're elderly. Um, maybe once a week they'll go down to Queen Victoria Market. That'll be their, their, the highlight of their week. Oh, cute. And they're, uh, they're, ama they're amazing. They've got a karaoke uh, machine down there and you can hear them singing in Cantonese and Mandarin any day of the week if you walk down the bottom end of Brunswick Street um, and um, and then you've got um, Chinese people who might live in Box Hill who might be middle class who or, or students university students and then you've got other Chinese people I guess you two would probably come to mind who are um, who who are you know you've spoken about your feelings about China and Australia but you mix a lot with non-Chinese people where the, the Chinese people on the estates don't do that. A lot of the plasters that, that I work with don't really mix outside of their community. A lot of people who live in Box Hill are very happy living just within the, with the you know, Chinese people in that community. It's very Chinese centric. So um, do you, I mean, starting with you, Doris, I mean, do you mix uh, um, much with people who, are, who aren't Chinese? Do you think, I mean, I know as an Irish person, I couldn't think of anything worse than just hanging out with Irish people in Australia all the time. I mean, what, what would I bother, you know? I mean. Just yeah. stay at home if I wanted to do that, but um, like, what you, you? It seems to me, at least, and I, I might have got this wrong, that you mix outside of Chinese Australia community um, more than other groups of Chinese people. For example, the ones that I've mentioned. Would that be a correct assumption? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've got, like, I, I, I was here for high school, so I've got schoolmates, and um, now they've all grown into, like, you know, you know, successful entrepreneurs and or business person or, you know, and, um, and then also I've got friends who, you know, I made along the way. They are, just happen to be in my life and, um, and business partners as well. And they just very nice. And, you know, we just become friends after a while working together. And it's just, I think it, it just happens to be that, you know, I, as you work or you do things, you uh, mingle with people and then you develop relationship and friendship. And another important thing, as I said before, it's to open your mind to actually accept it and don't be afraid. Because I think a lot of people might be afraid of, of mixing with, mingle with other other people. And I have friends, Muslim friends. I have, you know, like um, Indian background, Nav, and you know, he's a very good friend. The owner of the fish. Yeah, the, the right owner of, uh, yeah. and I've got, you know, other friends. It, it, the good thing about me mingling with them is that I actually have a chance to know about them, to understand that part of the world and to open up my mind and actually I think it's I think it's a good thing for me. And you Sean, I mean I you definitely mix with Chinese people but also with a whole range of different cultures in in this city for my observation anyway. Yes, um, from my experience, I would say as long as it's coming with a good will towards the people, it doesn't matter what the race, what, what the races they are, you're getting a good outcome. Yeah. If you're coming with a good will. I would say um, it's really, um, we have a 1.4 billion in China. Why would I want to deal with the Chinese that much in Melbourne though? You know, if I really want to deal with the Chinese, I go back. 1.4 billion for me to wait, ready for me, you know. So pretty much here is for me to exploring the new map, a new world for me to get to know the different culture. But I would say in Melbourne, I would say the, um, uh, as Australia, and we've been combining with a different culture. Well, you know, with the great yeah, it's Italian, a, it's a really good we've been doing all right. I think I have to say we we've been doing better, a lot better than the, than the US. I would say we I felt really comfortable here. Compared with the, uh, got uh, some experience, or even the media is talking about in the you know, U U United States. I feel comfortable here, so that means th this thing works. And I mean, the the multiple culture and different races, and we are living here for about two hundred years. We've been doing all right. With the, obviously, there always been a uh, racism, whatever you want to call, uh, and a little rival, little little problems. But for me, to, you know, I think we uh, uh, Australia. As ex, 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 experiment, a big continent of different races and different cultural background, and this part of the continent we have been doing a lot better than another part of the world. We've been doing it right. Yeah, we are uh, like one of the world's leaders in multiculturalism, I think. And also, I think in Melbourne, we have the privilege of being able to actually do that. So you, you have all sorts of different races and different people from back, uh, different backgrounds. And, and that's such a privilege. And, you know, you don't have to fly to Africa. You don't have to fly to Italy to know it's Italian people. Mm. And, um, and you have, you know, really good pizza down, down Ligon Street and you got, you know, all sorts of other stuff here. Chinatown, Greek Street, you know, yeah. it's good. Well, we've been doing all right. You know, we have no problem. As long as we make money, that's the main thing. <laughs> so, Sean, just one last question to you. Um, how do you see yourself in five years' time and how do you see China-Australia relations in five years' time and how do you see Chinese, you know, Chinese living in Australia in five years' time? Well, like, what would you like to see at least? Starting for you, with yourself. I would say um, I definitely want to see um, the both side of the government making more wise choices about what's the ultimate agenda for the both people of the countries. You know, we wanna we wanna benefit the citizen of you know Australia and also the Chinese, we wanna make business, we wanna make things going. We don't want any um, problems. We don't want any political correction because I have to follow someone. We don't want that. We want to 
we st- I still want to see um, um, the I would say all the Chinese tourism the, the tourists that come here and spend their money and 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 to get get to know more about Australia and also want to see the Australian people and got a more chance after the COVID go to China go to Beijing my hometown see the forbidden city what's your hometown Doris Dalian Dalian yes. yeah so c- carry on and yes we'll go back to, to China have a look yeah. what, what's going on over there yeah. you know sometimes you know we 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 um, the the window is too narrow to only stays on the uh, the YouTube and and, and uh, the the media, you know, just to don't yeah, come and experience China. Exactly, come come to China, have have a, have an experience here. What was also I, I'm I'm willing to the Chinese people to come here, experience it. You know, like give me a call. So you're going to be like a movie star? Are you going to be a pilot still, or what are you going to do? I would say in I'm five think, years time. You know, I'm thinking of a sudden guns maybe, now. Maybe you'll be in Hollywood or somewhere. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking of a sudden guns. I will be working for a firearm shop for uh, one of my friends. Um, Please don't mix that with piloting. Yeah, I mean, yes, uh, legitimate though. Yeah, everything is licensed. Um, we had Mick Gatto on the show recently, so we can <laughs> I can put you into contact with him. It's a joke, Mick. Yeah, if you're watching. So pretty much, um, I would say, it just the human is. We, we, we are no longer the separate nations. We are the whole global uh, species. Yeah. I want I wanted the Chinese people to come here that come to Australia to, to visit more and I, I'm willing to show them you know and, and, and that the, what is real about Australia and also I want the Australian people they've got a more chance to go back to China they go to I Beijing could, and I Shanghai. could take care of the China part yes. and you do the Australian part yes and have a, have a, we'll have build a, a bridge here have a have a look yes I, I'm willing to uh, be becoming a bu- uh, bu- uh, bridge builder instead of uh, uh, a bridge uh, burner you know, I want to I want to establish this really healthy connections between the people from Australia and China, and I believe we have already been do, doing a good job uh, uh, through the, the previous ten years. And Doris, I mean, same question to you. I mean, how do you see yourself in five years' time? Uh, what, what are you hoping to achieve? Where are you hoping to be? And how do you think things are going to pan out between China, Australia, and this part of the world over the next five years? Um. Well, I'm really hoping to see things improve and. I do believe it will, you know, power of my mind. Hopefully, it works and um, it 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 will become better. And um, so, I'm looking into investing in the tourism industry as well to, you know, stabilize employment, to attract, you know, more people into. As I said before, 1.4 billion buying power. So that's actually a lot, and it's quite exciting to actually hear about it and to to have the actually. It's I think I have the the advantage of being able to you know have both parties to understand both parties and to reach into like both um, countries and, and nations to actually help them so I, I hope that I could actually work um, as as Sean as a bridge builder for exactly. for, for, the, for exactly. both for both countries exactly especially like you know living here and having the background of, of you know the Chinese background. That's all we could do. Could that's, for the best. That's, that's, that's a really good goal. Hey, um, thank you both for coming on, Doris. Thanks for coming on Melbourne no Calling. Problem. Sean, thank you. I appreciate that. Fascinating. Thanks, thanks very much. Thank you.